Alexa, turn on Kitchen 2, 100%. Hi everyone, uh, sorry for that uh, delay getting uh, live. Um, I thought today I would do a quick live video and the reason for it was um, Octopus Intelligent. I've had a bit of a breakthrough and I've had some issues and there's, I've solved the battery drain problem. So there's lots of things I want to talk about and I start to think there's, there's lots of detail, lots of screen prints, lots of editing that could be done with these videos. And I thought, now just sod all that. Let's, let's do a live video and just get it out live because it's all happened today. Um, so I thought I'd try and give you an update. Hopefully you can hear me okay. Uh, someone send a message. Give me a thumbs up if you can. Um, I hope that's all working. I haven't done a live stream for a long while. And they always seem, they always seem uh, are they going to work? Aren't they going to work? Anyway, let's get over to Octopus Intelligence straight away. I really hope you can all hear and see okay. Um as you know from the first video that I put up about Octopus Intelligent, I connected the mini integration to go live with it and the sign up process and the testing of the connection with the mini worked absolutely brilliantly. Let's um, have a look at the screen here. There we go, I'm just setting up live chat so I can actually see any messages that do come through. So anyway, the mini worked perfectly connecting, but my first test overnight failed. And I was a little bit disappointed because it seemed to go so smoothly and everything was working fine. I even checked on the mini electric forum on Facebook to see how many people were using Intelligent and how successful they were. And loads of people have got it working perfectly. So I had high hopes that the mini would work. But as it turns out, the connection between Octopus and the mini had failed. So it was setting a schedule. It was giving me feedback on the my, on the Octopus app to say that the schedule was set for charging, but it never sent a schedule to the Mini. And therefore, every time I turned the Zappy into charging mode to leave it ready for the smart charge, Octopus never took control, stopped the charge, and carried on. It just kept charging and charging in peak rate. So that's that's not what we want, is it? You know, I should have had a thumbnail of <gasps> shock horror car charging on uh, grid at full rate. Anyway, um, I'm not sure what the issue is. I'm guessing that it's the 3G, 4G connectivity of the mini in that I have terrible mobile signal here. Um, and it's probably that the day that I did the test, I had good connectivity and it worked and the timing of stopping and starting the charging was brilliant with the mini. But um, yesterday when I set up the actual test charge, it just wasn't having it at all. During the setup process, I could tell it wasn't working. And overnight, yeah, it de definitely didn't work. I then tried deleting the device in the Octopus app setup. So I deleted the mini integration and then re-added it and went through the test process. And this time it didn't work at all. So um, yeah, there, there's definitely something wrong yesterday and today that my first test process worked and it didn't afterwards. So a d disappointing test, and it does make you think, uh, it's too complicated, doesn't work very well, you know, loads of people are gonna struggle with it, high support. So all very, very negative. But then um, after a message on Twitter, I was having a chat with Jordan Brompton of um, My Energy, and she suggested that I go on the beta program for the My Energy Zappy integration with Octopus. And I declined. I declined um, saying that, no, I want to give the Mini a chance first. I want to do that first. But lo and behold, I was about to type on the uh, tablet this morning, Jordan, please, can I have the beta test? And uh, coincidentally, or maybe not coincidentally, at the same time, Octopus sent me a request saying, do you want to do the um, My Energy Zappy beta integration? So I'm not sure who it came from. I'm not sure whether it was Jordan at My Energy or whether it was Octopus that have sent me that invite and got me into that program. But boy, was it better. Um, I, I had a failure to start with setting up the Zappy and I was using my tablet from Huawei, or Huawei, whatever you pronounce it, um, that doesn't have Google Play services on it. And I had an error that it wasn't um, connecting to the Zappy. But at the same time, I logged into my My Energy account, which is where the integration occurs. And uh, I noticed, let's see if I can show it to you. Um, I have a picture here ready. On the products, you get a live section, a live tab, and a deleted tab. I don't know if you can see that. 
But basically, I had my Zappy and Eddie in the deleted section. They weren't available and live on the My Energy account. Now, I've never seen that before. So whether that's part of the process of going through this connection, I don't know. But anyway, I clicked retry, reconnect. They reconnected. And I stopped using the Huawei tablet and went to my Doogie phone and used the Octopus Intelligent Energy app. Because <laughs> there's so many apps and so many names, isn't there? Um, but anyway, I went to the Octopus app, set up a test charge and a test connection with the Zappy, and it was instant. So there's a lot less clicking, a lot less faff, a lot less waiting. Um, the sign-on to the account was fine. And uh, literally in a matter of seconds, because um, I configured a test charge that happened within the next few minutes, literally it just seemed like seconds and suddenly my Zappy was charging. And it, did I really do that? Did it really work? And yes, it did. Now, the amazing thing with that is I then did a second test charge um, to look at how it was doing the test and the boost that it was doing finished. And then automatically the charge seemed to carry on, but it wasn't at full rate charge. And for a few seconds, I couldn't figure out why it was carrying on. But of course, it was solar. There was enough solar and I had a battery and uh, it converted from doing a boost via the smart charge to doing a solar um, top up from the same charger. So it seamlessly changed from the charge from Octopus to me doing a solar charge. And uh, because it was a six kilowatt charge that I was seeing, I started to think, you know, what is it? Because it, it was I'm not used to seeing sunshine right at the moment. Anyway, so yeah, bad news that the mini integration didn't work, but fantastic news about how fast I got onto the beta program and how quick it was to get onto it. A lot less clicking, a lot less faff. And the the thing that I'd like to share with you, because there's a lot of people with Zappy Ones especially. Uh, cheers, Trev. Nice to see a message. The really good thing is, and I know a lot of people are worried about whether the Zappy One will work. Well, I haven't updated to the Zappy 2 yet. I've still got the Zappy 1 and it worked. So yes, Zappy 1s are working on the beta version of the Octopus Intelligent and MyEnergy Zappy uh, software. What did I have to do and what does it look like? Oh, I was a little bit surprised because I went onto the MyEnergy app to look at the Zappy to see what had been set, to see if I could see what was there. And there was nothing under smart charging, there was nothing under a schedule and there's nothing visible under a boost. So it was completely independent, and uh, I couldn't see what was really going on from the My Energy app, apart from the amount of boosted energy was going up, and I could see it was going up. So clearly, they're doing a boost of a certain number of kilowatt hours or a certain amount of time, and uh, that seemed to work seamlessly. So yeah, fantastic news. That's why I wanted to get this out live fast. Teething problems with the car integration, but... Isn't that the case that we find um, car integrations just don't work as well for charging as using the apps for actual chargers? So yeah, very, very pleased with that. What else have I got to share with you? Um, yeah, the draining of the battery, that's the one that I wanted to talk about as well because you'll have seen it in other videos. I think I watched um, EV Nick the other day um, and saw that he was commenting saying that it sort of works but drains the batteries. But from my brief understanding of doing these test charges now, what we're talking about is an inconvenience, really, that you go to set your car for a charge on the Octopus app within a matter of seconds or a few minutes, if everything's working really well, then you get a schedule of when it's going to do that charge. And most of the time, I guess it's going to be inside the time slot of half 11 at night to half five in the morning. But sometimes it'll be outside of that. So you might get uh, two half hour slots before that in the evening or two half hour slots in the morning outside of those times. And the inconvenience is then to turn your battery off because the way we avoid drain normally is you either charge your home storage battery at the same time you're charging the car or set it into charging mode so it's not discharging. And if it's not discharging, then you're not draining the battery. So the trick is to tell the battery to not discharge. So the simple thing is to do what we've done all along. Um, look at the schedule from Octopus, go on to your app. So for me, it'd be VRM for the Victron kit. Go to the scheduling side of when I'm scheduling whether the battery is charging or not and add a schedule for those extra half an hours. You know, I reckon that would take me 
30 to 40 seconds to get to that um, position and then a minute to set up those schedules. So we're, we're talking two minutes effort um, when I do a smart charge to take account of any extra time sessions that come along. So it's not, it's not a huge effort, but it might seem like it. So what I wanted to do was automate that a bit further. And what I've looked at is, well, with my Victron inverter and batteries, how can I tell the battery to not discharge? And there's several ways of doing that. I can't control the schedules, so I can't programmatically in Home Assistant or anything else automate those schedules. But I can turn the battery into a different mode, keep the batteries charged. I can do that programmatically. Thanks, Chris, for telling me. Um, so that's one way of doing it. And the other way is to set the maximum inverter limit on how much power the inverter is going to kick out. Set that to the level of just the base load of the house. So that, that's the one I've gone for. So I've set up um, a button. So I'll show you Home Assistant down here on that side, inverter max button, which is off currently. I've set up a button that was, for me, the coding of that is just copy, cut and paste from another button that I've already done, so nothing complicated. And it's just copying a new metric to say it's the max inverter power definition area. And uh, that's just a different address that basically I call and a different address that I set. So it's it's not complicated coding. Anyone that wants Home Assistant and Victron um, copies of that, I'll, I'll give you that on Twitter. But it's, it's not a lot of coding. Um, it was really copy and paste, so nice and easy. So once I can see that variable, then I've set up a button so I can change the variable. All I've done is turned it on and off, as in set it to 400 watts for my base load, or set it to 4,800, which is pretty much the, the peak output of the inverter. So that's what I've done. And that means instead of two minutes to do it, um, I can get to say seven o'clock at night, something like that. I can set the charge on the car. Um, the car's already plugged in. And then I can turn the inverter to um, 400 watts. And then it carries on for as long as we want, obviously, unless we go and make a cup of tea or a cup of coffee or do cooking, do some washing after that time, then obviously I wouldn't want to set the 400 watts until we've finished using all the energy. But then in the morning, instead of having to remember to push the button, I can set it on a timer to say it's half an hour after sunrise, change it back to maximum. And that can be completely automated. So I've actually found the way of doing the slicker way of avoiding battery drain as well. So I think, I think I'm there. I think I'm now really positive and really happy about Octopus Intelligent. And it was feeling a bit dodgy to start with, I suppose, because the, the setup of the car didn't feel, didn't feel slick. It felt like a test system and it did feel like it was vulnerable. Um, or even though it worked first time for me, but now with the My Energy one, even though it's in beta release, literally just a couple of days, um, I was really impressed how slick that was and how much easier it was. So I've got more confidence. And yeah, looking forward to uh, subsequent chargers that should work uh, as we go along. So I think that's about it. Um, I think that's what I want to talk about. Uh, yeah, failed charge with the Mini, and it's because it couldn't connect to the Mini. Success with the Zappy, that's gone really smoothly. Um, so thank you to Octopus and My Energy, Jordan, if that was you, thank you uh, for getting that going. Um, that happened incredibly quickly. And I'm now happy as well that I can easily control those extra segments if I want to. Um, a little a little aside, uh, an odd note that I did today, um, I set a schedule for the test for the Zappi, and I set it for, for now, or for now-ish, and the car schedule that it came up with gave me some times that were 7.30 and 8 o'clock in the morning, and I thought to myself, well, that's a little bit odd, because if Octopus are offering me those schedules, isn't the terms that they are cheap rate? So if you go to set a charge for your car first thing in the morning for a morning departure, you need an urgent charge. Is it a coincidence that they just offered me a cheap charge at those hours or will they try their best to give me a charge? And that's a way of getting extra cheap sessions. Um, I'm not quite sure whether that's um, something that can be worked to our advantage to get extra sessions when you want them. I'm, I'm not quite sure about that, but I guess, I guess we'll find out when we'll find out how the system works and we'll find out whether there are things that work in our favor or things that don't quite work in our favor. I, I, I especially like how this feels. It doesn't feel like Octopus are 
taking from us. They're not using our equipment and using the ability of the charging to their advantage. I mean, they are in the background. They're making a profit from it, aren't they? They wouldn't be doing it otherwise. They are getting paid for this. So they, they are gaining, but they're giving enough back and we're getting enough back on cheaper rates that it, it feels good. And uh, especially when they're giving the extra time slots or if you're lucky enough to get the um, free energy slots that they're offering as well these days, I think Octopus are giving enough back that it feels cooperative. It feels like we're working as a team. So, yeah, very, very happy with that. Anyway, that's uh, that's all I want to share with you. So a nice short video. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I suppose before I go, I could give you a snippet of something that's going on here, um, unrelated to Octopus. Um, more portable batteries and battery testing. Uh, I've had some fun with a couple of battery manufacturers over the last few days. One offered to send me a new portable battery and solar panel. And I was very keen on the solar panel because if you saw my video about charging the mini in the field, it suddenly dawned on me. What I want is more portable panels, not the fixed glass ones. So I'm after testing um, bigger panels to see what I can do with that. Um, that's of interest to me. But they wanted me to test, um, it was all powers, an all powers R250 battery. Anyway, I said yes. And uh, they sent across the battery and the panels. But... They didn't send what they said. They sent a lesser spec one and uh, two 200 watt panels, not the 400 watt panel I wanted to test. So uh, I'm in conversation with them at the moment to see if they are going to send what they actually said they were going to um, and what to do with these extra ones that I've sent. But coincidentally, uh, this morning, so absolutely live, uh, Bluetti contacted me again. They obviously you know, like sending out batteries to test. Um, I'm not that keen on testing more and more batteries that are all the same. But I am interested in testing more of the bigger solar panels, as I said. So Bluetti do a nice 350 watt panel. So they offered to send me an AC200P battery. So I think that's a two kilowatt hour, two kilowatt output battery, so a de decent box. So yeah, you can hardly say no to something like that, I suppose, even though I'm not keen on doing these sort of review videos constantly. But the PV panel, I was definitely after. So they agreed to send that as well um, so that I would do the review of the battery for them. So yeah, that, that's, that's worked out quite well that um, I've got some extra portable panels now and extra batteries to do some more tests with, let's say the Mini again, in a field charging from solar panels. And uh, yeah, I just need to wait for a sunny day now, don't I? We haven't had many of those lately. Right, anyway, so there you go. That's the final update. So brilliant news on Octopus and uh, more great stuff to come with solar panels and energy. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you can hear everything on this. Uh, I am apprehensive of the audio on these things when I do it. But people are watching, so I trust it's all good. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. See you again soon for more videos about all sorts of great stuff. And uh, yeah, if you're not on Octopus yet, have a look at the referral code in the description of the video or any of my videos, and you'll get, get yourself across to Octopus because they're doing great things. And uh, yeah, whether it's Go, whether it's Agile, whether it's Flux, whether it's an export tariff, God, things have changed, haven't they, in the last few years. They are so much better with energy apart from the high prices. Let's hope they come down. Thanks again. See you again soon. Bye for now.